Now, after 13 Makki Suras, we come to the Madani Suras of this group, and they are three. After a very long pause, you know, we had four in the very beginning, Bakara, Ali Imran, Nisa, Maida. Then two, Anfal, and Toba. Then very far off, one, Surat nur Then another one, after eight Suras, Surat al -Ahzab. Now we come to three Suras, Surat Muhammad, and then Surat al -Fatr. The second Madani Surah of this group is Surat al -Fatr. The first was Surat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or Surat Al-Qital. Now the timings of their revelation are very important. Surat Al-Qital or Surat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was revealed when the armed conflict phase was going to start. It was the beginning of the Qital fi sabilillah. And the Surah of Fatah was revealed in the sixth year after Hijrah. When we may say that a four years war had come to some end, meaning thereby that the Kufr had understood that now they are no match for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, they had to and they were forced to make a treaty with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared as a clear victory, Sulah Hudabiyah. Now, the historical background is that Ghazwatul Ahzab, it took place in the fifth year after Hijrah. And after that battle of Ahzab, the Prophet ﷺ has said to the Muslims that this was the last time that the Quraysh could dare to come and attack us. Now they will not be able to take this initiative. Now the initiative will be from our side. لَنْ يَغْزُوكُمْ قُرَيْشْ بَعْدَ عَمِكُمْ حَازَا وَلَكِنَّكُمْ تَغْزُونَهُمْ Quraysh are not going to, to invade you, attack you after this year of yours. Now we shall take the initiative. So after that, he saw a dream, a vision. And the dream and vision of a prophet is also wahi. But wahi khafi. That is, not loud wahi, not jali wahi, but silent wahi, inspiration. To wahi a jali we call revelation, because it is verbal. The whole message comes with the wordings given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. But inspiration is the English word for wahi khafi. Some idea comes to the mind or heart of the Prophet sallallahu He expresses it with his own words. The words are not divine. The words are from Muhammad sallallahu This is called wahi khafi. We may call them the silent wahi. So he saw a you know, dream that he and the Muslims, they were performing Umrah. So he declared, as I told you, wahi of a prophet is also this khab, this, this vision and dream of a prophet is also wahi. So much so that Hazrat Ibrahim wasalam, was ready to sacrifice his son, the only son. Till that time he was the only son. This half came later. Only on the basis of the vision. So now, the Prophet sent a call to all people that I am going to Umrah, perform Murak. Now, whosoever can come should go with me. About 1400 people accompanied him. According to certain traditions, the number was 1800. Somewhere between 14 and 1800. When they reached there and the news came to the Quraysh of Bakka, they were very furious. We are never going to let Muhammad and his companions make Umrah here. 
So the position came very tense. And there was some negotiation going on. Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu was sent. But he was detained there due to some reasons. And then the rumor spread that he was killed, sallallahu radiallahu anhu. On that, the Prophet took the bear from the Muslims who were present there. This is called bear to Rizwan, because it is mentioned in the surah, رضي الله عن المؤمنين is يبايعون كتحت الشجرة to bear to Rizwan. It is called also bear al الموت. The bear was that we shall not go back from here, though every one of us is killed here. Bear al الموت. But when these news reached Bakka, now they were perturbed. The resolution, you know, determination on the part of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Mu'mineen, the believers. So then some negotiations started and a treaty was concluded which is called the Treaty of Hudabiyah. It was in a way degrading to the Muslims because the first condition was that this year you have to go back without performing Umrah. But the next year you can come. We shall vacate, the, the Quraysh of Makkah said, we shall vacate Makkah for three days for you. We shall go to the mountains. You perform the rites of Umrah at peace. But this year you have to go back. And then it was a treaty for ten years that there should be peace between us, no fight, no battle. And whosoever of the tribes of that area wanted, they could become party to the Quraysh. Whosoever wanted, they could become the partners of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in this way, another thing which was degrading for Muslims was that if a Muslim escapes, for, for example a Muslim in Mecca, he has, he has come to believe and his parents, they have tied him in chains. Somehow he breaks the chains and he comes to Medina, but Muslims will have to send him back. But if someone comes from Medina to Makkah, we will not be forced or obliged to send him back. So two, two things were there which were unequal. So the Muslims as a whole, they were not happy at this treaty. Why are we? making this treaty as the weaker party. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us strength. We can fight them. Why should we bow down? But the Prophet said, I am doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded me to do. When this treaty was concluded, then these ayat were revealed. And the immediate result of this treaty was that when Muhammad sallallahu was fully secure from the southern part, southern side, from Meccan side, then he invaded Khaybar, which was to the north of Medina, conquered Khaybar, and it brought a lot of, you know, booty and you know, wealth to the Muslims, so that the Muslims became well-to-do, all of them. So this was the first result, that is the conquest of Khaybar. The second result was that when there was peace, the missionary dawa activity, it increased and intensified. The Prophet in intensified his dawa and missionary activity. And secondly, because you know the tribes of the Arabia, they saw that Quraysh had to make a treaty with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What does it mean? It means they have recognized Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Where when you conclude a treaty with some party, you recognize him. So it means that, that now they feel that Muhammad is a power to reckon with. So now there was a wave, people accepting Islam. So this was the second fruit of this treaty. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna fatahna laka fatah mubina. We have granted you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a very clear and manifest victory. لَيَغْفِرَ لَكَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذُمِّكَ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should compensate for you any of your shortcomings, whether previous or later. 
I am translating zamb. It's not sin. This word we can't use for Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Shortcomings. Wajadiya ke sir, wajatimma nima tahu ane ka, and he so that he now completes and perfects his blessing over you. Wajadiya ke sir, aka mustaqima, and guides you to the straight way. And I understand with this that now guides your struggle to establish the deen of Allah in a very straight line. Now the road is open. وَيَنْصُرَكَ اللَّهُ نَصْرًا عَزِيزًا And so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps you with a mighty help. هُوَ الَّذِي أَنْدَرَ السَّكِينَةَ فِي قُلُوبُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ It is He who sent down the calm in the hearts of the believers because they were not happy but still because the Prophet was doing it, they took it. That was a discipline. And this was due to the calm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down in their hearts. The yazdadu iman and ma'aymanihim, so that they should have more faith in addition to the faith that they already had. Walillahi dunudu samawati wallard. To Allah belong the armies and hosts of the heavens and the earth. Wa kana Allahu aliman hakima. And verily Allah is all knowing, all wise. لِيُدْخِلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ جَنَّاتٍ تَلِيمِ مِنْ تَعْتِ الْأَنْحَارِ So that he should admit the believer men and the believing women, gardens underneath which rivers will be flowing. وَيُكَفِّرْ عَنْهُمْ سَيِّعَاتِهِمْ And acquit them of their evil deeds. وَكَانَ ذَلِكَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ فَوْضٍ عَظِيمًا And with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a very big triumph. And so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chastises the hypocrite men and women and those men and women who associate with Allah false gods who think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala evil thoughts. عَلَيْهِمْ دَائِرَةُ السَّوْءُ Against them shall be the evil turn of misfortune. وَغَذِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ And Allah will be angry upon them. وَلَعْنَهُمْ وَعَدَّ لَهُمْ جَهَنَّمَا And He will curse them and He will prepare for them the hell, وَسَعَتْ مَسِيرًا And it's a very evil destination. Actually the munafiqeen at that time, they thought that it's a big blunder that Muhammad is committing صلى الله عليه وسلم. They withheld. They did not go with Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Only the Muminin Sadiqin went. The Munafiqin thought he is going. Where he is going? He wants to meet Quraysh and also at Makkah. So they will never be able to return. This is given in further in the ayat. You will find this. They thought they will all be finished. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and all the Muslims who are going. You know, they will all be finished by Quraysh. So that was within their hearts. وَلِلَّهِ جَنُودُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ To Allah belong all the hosts and armies of the heavens and the earth. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا And Allah is ever mighty voice. إِنَّا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ شَاهِدًا وَمُبَشِّرًا وَنَذِيرًا We have sent you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, as a witness and bearer of the glad tidings and a warner. لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ So that you, O believers, have real faith in Allah and His Messenger. وَتْوَعْزِرُوهُ وَتْوَقِرُوهُ And you help the Messenger and honor Him. وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَسِيلًا And you glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the mornings as well as the evenings. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُبَايَعُونَ كَإِنَّمَا يُبَايَعُونَ اللَّهِ Verily, those who are pledging themselves to you, actually they are pledging themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this is the ba'ah. What is ba'ah? The root is ba'ah. Ba'ah means to sell. Ba'ah or to sell. So actually, iman, when a person says, I accept Allah as my Lord, it is as if he has sold himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the price he will get in the hereafter, and that is Jannah. Now this, whatever he has, his life, 
and his belongings are a trust with him. He had already sold them. So whenever, whosoever had purchased, he can demand, bring forth, give me. But who will demand on behalf of Allah? It was the Prophet ﷺ. So the bear was, the sale was between the Mu'min and Allah. But on behalf of Allah, it was the position of Muhammad Wasallam to demand them to come and expend their lives and their wealth in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now this was the bear. A person, you know, had to put his hand over the head of the Prophet Wasallam and pledge himself. But Allah here says that actual bear he is doing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because bear is between the believer and Allah. So what is, this is what is said here. In the lazina yubayyaunaka, verily, those who are pledging themselves, giving their bayah to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in the ma yubayyaunallah, verily, they are pledging themselves and selling themselves to Allah. Yadullahi fawqa adihim. I call this a tripartite agreement. There are three parties. Hand of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa On this comes the hand of the, the believer, Mu'min who is pledging himself. Allah says there is another hand, third hand of Allah, above it, but it is invisible. Yadullahi fawqa adihim. The hand of Allah is there, over their hands. Faman nakasa. Now whosoever breaks this pledge, fa'innama yankusu ala nafsi. So he will break it to his own loss. وَمَنْ أَوْفَى بِمَا عَهْدَ عَلَيْهُ اللَّهَ And whosoever fulfills whatever he has made covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for فَسَيُوتِهِ أَجْرٍ عَظِيمًا To him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give a very mighty reward. سَيَقُونُ لَكَ الْمُخَلَّفُونَ مِنَ الْعَرَابِ Now this second section that is referring to when the Prophet came back and he was going back to Medina after concluding the treaty. Now those things, those Munafiqeen, they were thinking that he will never be able to come back. It's finished. The whole game is finished. And here Muhammad is coming, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in, in a way victorious because the Quraysh had acknowledged him, recognized him, that he's a power to reckon with. So, يَقُولُ لَكَ الْمُخَلَّفُونَ مِنَ الْعَرَابِ now when you return to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the desert Arabs who were left behind, who didn't join you, they will say, O Prophet, شَغَلَكْنَا أَمْوَالُنَا وَحْلُونَا Our possessions and our families kept us occupied. That is why we couldn't go with you. فَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَنَا So ask Allah's forgiveness for us. يَقُولُونَ بِأَلْسِنَتِهِمْ they are saying with their tongues, مَا لَيْسَ فِي قُلُوبَهِمْ What is not there in their hearts. قُلْ فَمَنْ يَمْلِكُ لَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا Ask them, who can avail anything against Allah if he intends to do you any harm? إِنَ رَادَ بِكُمْ ضَرًا If somebody says, okay, my wife was very sick, I couldn't go with you. But could you cure your wife? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed death for your wife, or could not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her the health without you? It's a matter of conviction. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided something evil for you, so who has the authority to stop him? If he has decided for you something good, so who can stop him? Balkan Allah bima ta'amaluna khabira. What you were doing, Allah was very much aware of it. Bal zanantum. Now this is what was there in heart in this next ayah. Bal zanantum an lay yan qalib al-rasoola wal-mu'minuna ila ahlihim abada. Actually you thought that the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the believers would never return alive to their families. They are doomed. The game is finished. Wazwiyyana zalika fi qulubikum. And this idea was made beautiful in your hearts. And you had guest, an evil guest. And definitely 
you are a people ruined mamal lam yumin billahi wa rasulihi fa inna atadda lil kafirin as-sa'ira whosoever doesn't believe in allah and his messenger so we have for such disbelievers we have prepared a blazing fire walillahi mulku samawati wal ard to allah belongs the kingdom and sovereignty of the of the heavens and the earth yasuru li man yasha wa yasuru man yasha he will forgive whomsoever he wills and chastise whomsoever he wills wa kana allah ghafurur rahim and verily allah is ghafur and rahim forgiving and merciful sayqul al mukhallifun idh antalaqtum ila maghani bal ta'khuzuha daruna na tabi'kum now when the prophet decided to launch an attack on khaybar now these munafiqeen also said that we should go with him you see it it seems that the tides have turned and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam will come to khaybar and then there will be lot of ghadima lot of booty so we also want to go with you to khaybar sayqul al mukhallifun very soon those who were left behind left behind during the sulah hudaybiyah they, they didn't go there for the for umrah when you set forth to take spoils this is referring to the expedition of khaybar bita khuduha zaruna natabikum allow us permit us to go with you kazalikum qala allah min qabl qul lam tattabi'una yuriduna an yubaddalu kalam allah they want to change the decision of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qul lam tattabi'una kazalikum qala allah min qabl allah has already said that you will not go with us fasa yaquluna bal tahsudunana they will say you are jealous of us bal kanu la yaftahuna illa qalila but the reality is that they understand not but a little they wanted to go to khaybar but it was declared that only those will accompany the messenger of allah towards khaybar who had gone with the intention of umrah to makkah no else nobody else will be able to accompany him qul lil mukhallifin min al arab o prophet say to these people who were left behind from among the desert dwellers satudauna ila qaumin uli basin shadid very soon you will be called to fight against the nation having a great might of war to qatiluna hum aw yuslimun either you will go against them in fighting or they will surrender fa in tutiu yutikum allah ajran hasana at that time if you obey allah subhanahu wa taala will give you very good reward wa in tatawallaw kama tawallaytu min qabl and if you will turn your backs as you turned your backs before you are zibkum azaban alima allah will chastise you with a very painful chastise most of the interpreters they say that this refers to the the journey of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to tabuk when there was a confrontation between the prophet of allah on the one side and the roman empire on the other side now there was call for everyone to accompany him so it is referring to this a time will come when your iman will be again tested and if you turn your backs at that time also as just as you turn your backs at the eve of this sulah hudaybiyah the, the treaty of hudaybiyah then you know you will be chastised less ad al aba arajun there is no blame on the blind wala ad al araj harajun no there is any blame on the lame wala ala al marid harajun no there is any blame on someone who is sick wa may yuti allah wa rasulahu whosoever obeys allah and his messenger yudkhilu jannati tajri min tahti al anhar he will make them enter the gardens underneath which rivers will be flowing wa may yatawallab and whosoever turns his back yuazibhu azaban aliba he will chastise them he will chastise him with a painful chastisement laqad radi allah anil mu'minin verily allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with the believers is yubayuna ka taht ash-shajara when they were giving you o muhammad their bayah under that tree a small tree was there the prophet sat under the shade of that tree and then the people coming one by one and giving 
They are Bayat to Muhammad This is called Bayat Rizwan. 1400 or 1800 people gave their Bayat to him. فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah very well knew what was there, there in their hearts. Because till that time, treaty had not been concluded. And the rumor was that Hazrat Usman Razi Allah Ta'ala has been murdered. So it was to, to take an avenge. And this bayah was for fighting. Bayah al mawt No one of us will go from here, turn his back from the battlefield, although we might be killed, all of us. So what was the, in their hearts, you know? The Iman and, you know, the love of martyrdom, martyrdom, or martyrdom, whatever you, how you pronounce it. لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمَنِينَ اَذْ يُبَايَعُونَ كَتَحْتَ الشَّنَرَةِ فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ فَأَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ عَلَيْهِمْ So he sent down calm on them. وَعَسَابَهُمْ فَتْحًا قَرِيبًا And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then rewarded them with a very near treaty. Now this near treaty is either number one, the treaty himself, near victory. Either it is the treaty of Hudaybiya or this is the victory of Khaybar, which is referred here. وَبَغَانِمَ كَسِيرَةً And lot of spoils, يَاخُذُونَهَا which they will take. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا And verily Allah is all-powerful and all-wise. وَعَذَكُمُ اللَّهُ مَغَانِمَ كَسِيرَةً تَاخُذُونَهَا Allah has promised you more spoils that you will capture. And فَعَجَّنَ لَكُمْ هَذِهِ and this victory at Hudabiya, he has hastened to you. وَكَفَّعَيْدِ النَّاسِ عَنْكُمْ He withheld the hands of the people from you. لِتَكُونَ آيَةً لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ So that this becomes a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the believers. وَيَهْدِيَكُمْ سِرَاطًا مُسْتَقِيمًا So that he guides you to the right path. وَأُخْرَى لَمْ تَخْدَرُوهَا And other victory also, which... You have not been able to achieve up till, up till now. Lam taqdiruha. Lam taqdiru alayha. Qad ahat Allahu biha. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has encompassed it. Wa kaan Allahu ala kulli shayin qadira. And verily Allah is powerful over everything. This is the conquest of Khabar. Wa law qatalakum al-lazina kafaru. Had these disbelievers of Makkah fought you. La wallahu al-adwar. They must have turned their backs to you. Summa la yajiduna waliyam wala nasira. And they would not have found after that for them any protector nor any helper. Summa tallahi lati qad kharat min qabl. And this is the rule and practice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which has been there for all those people who were before. Walna tajid ali summa tallahi tabhila. And you won't find for the practices of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any change. وَهُوَ الَّذِي كَفَّ عَيْدِيَهُمْ عَنْكُمْ And it is He who withheld your hands from them. وَعَيْدِيَكُمْ عَنْهُمْ وَعَيْدِيَهُمْ عَنْكُمْ Their hands from you and your hands from them. بِبَطْنِ مَكَّةَ In the valley of Makkah. مِنْ بَعْدِ أَنْ أَسْفَرَكُمْ عَلَيْهِمْ Although He had granted you victory over them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't want that there should be a fight. There should be a battle at that time. And there are coming, you know, why the, what was the reason? This, this is given in the next ayah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, he stopped the hands of the kuffar and stopped the hands of the Muslims. So no, no fighting. Why? And whatever you were doing, Allah was seeing it. It is they who have disbelieved, number one. وَصَدُّوكُمَ عَلِ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ And who have stopped you from the sacred mosque. Number two. These are the crimes of the people of Bakka. وَالْحَدِيَ مَعَقُوفًا And the offering, the sacrifices, they are also being withheld from reaching its place, that is Bakka. أَيَّمْ لُغَ مَحِلَّهُ وَلَوْ لَا رِجَالٌ مُؤْمِنُونَ وَنِسَاءٌ مُؤْمِنَاتٌ If there were no believing men and women in Bakka, لَمْ تَعْلَمُوهُمْ Whom you didn't know. أَنْ تَتَعُوهُمْ There was every possibility that you would have trampled on them. When there is war, whosoever was in Makkah, 
would you would have taken them to the kafirs to unbelievers they might have been killed at your hands while they were muslims they couldn't make hijra they couldn't come to makkah they didn't have to mean they didn't have the means to travel to makkah for example laula rijalun mu'minuna wa nisaun mu'minatun if there were not the believing men and women lam ta'lamuhum whom you didn't know an tatawuhum there was a possibility that you would have trampled over them fa tusibakum minhum ma'aratan bi ghayri ilm and thus there might be fall upon you a guilt unknowingly if that was not the case we would have given you the clear victory after fighting but we stopped fighting here la yuzkir allah fi rahmatihi man yasha so that allah admits to his mercy whomsoever he likes law tazayyalu if those muslim and mu'min women and men had separated themselves from these kuffar absolutely law tazayyalu razabna alladhina kafaru minhum azaban alima we would have chastised these unbelievers at this very moment with a very painful chastisement but because they were mixed and it was every possibility that they would have been killed is jala alladhina kafaru fi qulubihim hamiyata hamiyata al-jahiliya when those who disbelieved had set up in their hearts pride and haughtiness of the pagan ignorance fa'anzal allah sakinatahu ala rasulihi but allah sent down his calm and tranquility over his messenger and over the believers walzabahum kalimat taqwa and made them stick to the word of piety wa kanu ahqa biha wa ahlaha for they had better right of it and they were worthy of it wa kana allah bi kulli shay'in alima and definitely allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything laqad sadaq allah rasuluhu ar-ru'ya bil haqq verily allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had shown his messenger a true vision it was not wrong some people said oh prophet you said that you saw in the vision that we are performing umrah and now we are going without performing umrah so allah is giving this answer only it has been delayed otherwise the vision is absolutely correct and you know very soon inshallah you will enter the masjid haram this is the aya laqad sadaq allah rasuluhu ar-ru'ya bil haqq verily allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown to his messenger the vision the truth laqad khulunna al masjid al haram you will surely enter the sacred mosque inshallah if allah wills aminina absolutely in peace muhallaqina rusakum wa muqassirin getting your head shaved or your hair cut short la takhafun you will have to fear man fa alima ma lam ta'lamu allah knows what you do you didn't know fajala min dun zalika fatan qariba so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided before that a very near victory next year the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and muslims went there and as it was settled the pagans and the mushrikeen of bakka they vacated bakka all together they ascended the nearby mountains for 3 days there were the muslims only no kafir they performed the rites with full peace and calm so before that number 1 the treaty of hudaybiya was declared to be a victory inna fatahna laka fatam mubida and number 2 the conquest of khaybar this came before this umrah this is called umratul qaza that umrah which could not be performed and they had to open their ihram without performing umrah now the qaza was you know that was done the next year huwa alladhi arsala rasuluhu bil huda wa din al haqq li yuzhirahu ala al din kulli it is he allah subhanahu wa taala who has sent his messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam bil huda with the guidance the total guidance the final guidance wa din al haqq and the true deen the true system of justice political social economic justice li yuzhirahu ala al din kulli so that he makes it supreme over the whole of the religions wa kafa billahi shahida and verily allah subhanahu wa taala is sufficient as a witness and as a helper muhammadur rasulullah muhammad 
the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wal ladina ma'ahu and those who are with him that is the companions radhi Allah ta'ala anhum ashidda wal kuffar they are hard against the disbelievers ruhama bainahum very merciful among each other among themselves tarahum rukan you see them either bowing before Allah sujadan or prostrating before him yamtaguna fadla min Allah wa ridwana seeking the bounty from Allah and his player seemahu fi wujuhihim min asr sujud their sign is in their faces the effects of prostration that is their zalika masaluhum fi tawrat this is their similitude in tawrat wa masaluhum fi injil as far their similitude in the gospel kazarin akhraja shatahu like a sown corn seed that puts forth its shoot kazarin akhraja shatahu fastaghlada fastawa ala suqihi and then strengthens it and then it grows stout and rises straight on its stalk your jibu zurra delighting the growers so that yaghiza bihim al kuffar so that the disbelievers may be enraged and sorrowful now who is the zurra the zare here is muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this farm is this sahaba kiram rizwanullah taala ne bajmai now when he sees this garden you know there was a time when a very few people were, were with him even as i told you 10 years after the beginning of wahi he couldn't have more than 125 people with him but now how many people are with him so so that the the field you know is giving full harvest and the grower you know he becomes delighted وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ مِنْهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised those who believe and do good deeds among them مَغْفِرَةً number one forgiveness and number two وَعَجِرًا عَظِيمًا and a very mighty reward